The entire video game industry is collapsing under the weight of the woke agenda. Anybody who's not named Fortnite or Nintendo seems to be suffering, laying off their employees, cutting back, and as they call it now, right-sizing. Today, we're going to tell you just exactly what has happened, where the Wokies are going homies, and they're not coming back to work. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Pro Channel. It is a joy as always. This of course is the channel where we explain entertainment, keep you ahead of the culture curve. And it is indeed an honor to do so. Thank you for the click. And now the trick is to give you more than you thought when you came in. Today we are going to bounding into comics, an article by Spencer Bakuli, frequent friend of the channel and uh, collaborator as well. Warner Brothers Discovery admits Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League has fallen short of our expectations, foresees tough year for games division as they try to recover from the title's failure. Now, this is a game that we previously covered. We said that it is one of the most despicable pieces of fiction that we have seen in that it seems to glorify the bad guys in a way that absolutely re-envisions the heroes as less than. It seems to be an all-out attack on the legacy of the superheroes as they toss them in with the patriarchy and glorify bad guys. In doing so, they also take characters like Harley Quinn and change them from being anti-heroes into just, well, villainous scum. That's all you can say when you watch the things that that character does in the game. The article says, to the surprise of no one who so much as saw a trailer for the villain-led live service nightmare, Warner Brothers Discovery has admitted that Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League has not only been a sales disaster, but its bombing is also set to have a detrimental effect on the performances of the video game division. In other words, this is not just so bad that it's damaging the developer, the publisher. This is so bad that it is damaging the entire uh, effort to make video games under the Warner Brothers Discovery label and under their uh, curatorship. The failure of Rocksteady's widely panned Arkham series follow up was first officially confirmed by Warner Brothers Discovery Chief Financial Officer Gunnar uh, Weidenfels on February 23rd amidst the company's Q4 2023 earnings call. I have a feeling, folks, that Sweet Baby and the rest who turn this thing into what it is, they probably are not sweating the small stuff or the big stuff. They probably don't care that people are losing their jobs. And the folks who are losing their jobs are the same folks who went all in. Now, I don't take any joy in people losing their jobs. I'm not celebrating that. And I bet there are some good folks inside uh, these layoffs who did not deserve to go. At the same time, this is the way the industry will go so long as companies are determined to push forward with the same thing that destroyed Activision Blizzard, the same stuff that's destroying Disney, the same stuff that destroyed entertainment. Providing investors with a rough outlook of what they could expect financially from the company's studio segment which primarily handles its film, television, licensing, and interactive gaming operations, the key being that last one, in the coming year, Weidenfels explained of their video game prospects specifically, we are lapping the release of Hogwarts Legacy in February last year, which saw the largest portion of its very positive financial impact in the first quarter. This year, this new game that stars Harley Quinn and turns her into an abomination, one of our key video game releases in 2024 has fallen short of our expectations since its release earlier in the quarter, setting our games business up for a tough year over year comp in Q1. When they say that it has fallen short of expectations, they're talking about it so bad that it is making Dune Part 2 and Godzilla vs. Kong have a hard time lifting it. And that's really saying something. As noted above, the disastrous outcome of Rocksteady's latest outing comes as very little surprise given the abysmal quality of its every aspect, from its repetitive and boring mission design to its aggressively obnoxious UI design to the exorbitant prices of its microtransactions to its terribly written narrative to its shameless disregard for the very trilogy of titles that made its existence possible in the first place. The list of issues present within Kill the Justice League is one of the lengthiest and most damning in video game history. And yes, folks, this is possibly the end of Rocksteady as a developer, and we should have seen this coming. We did see this coming when the creators left the company over their objections, apparently, to where this was going. Where was it going? To DEI and tribalism and reimagining everything in the vein of what the woke see the world as being. Intersectionality, tribalism, postmodernism, neo-Marxism. You get the idea. Get rid of the superheroes 
proclaim victorious the bad guys and have the bad guys do things that are obnoxiously awful, abrasive, and terrible, and then reframe that as being good because the bad guys did it and the bad guys have to be good because the bad guys are going against the legacy characters who are created by a bunch of old white dudes, and they are bad. Harley Quinn, of course, one of the biggest victims of all of this. Kevin Conroy, the the one of the last performances he'll ever give us, Batman comes off as absolutely a sniveling exercise in watching one of the greats have to go through a embarrassing and humiliating uh, activity within the game. And all of this, of course, you are role-playing doing the things that are being done in it. We don't need to review it. We don't need to go back over it because we've already covered this. But the bottom line is, folks, there is a price to pay and the price is jobs. We've seen this now across the video game industry. We have watched in the last 24 hours as Sony has joined in and cut back on their positions within the gaming industry. That, again, due largely to this same issue of the gaming industry having gone completely, totally, utterly woke. It's the same thing that we're watching with Disney. It's just Disney is not quite there yet. But this is what happens when you do this. When you create products for an audience that doesn't exist, they are imaginary, just like many of the problems that the people at these gaming industries imagine and create in their own minds, the issues of not just the first world, but a world that is not even tangible at all, because these people invent reasons to be stressed rather than enjoying the future age of abundance that could be theirs if only they were productive, kind, and good to their fellow humans. And instead, they regress back to some sort of tribalism that we here on this channel detest totally. Folks, that's the video for today. You now know what the payment is going to be for the gaming industry. It's not pretty. It's not good. But this is what we have always understood what, what was coming for them if they continued to push forward into this. It's what we have been saying. Hey, Disney, you should stop doing this. It's what many of the movie studios have already figured out they don't want to do anymore. Unfortunately, it appears that this is all throughout our government. It's all throughout uh, so much of the various big corporations in the world. And if you've been on the Patreon, www.patreon.com slash WDWPro, well, then you know, because I posted it there, credit goes to Vash Sky for providing it, but the entire makeup of Hollywood has shifted dramatically, demographically, and that has been what we have seen across so many things. It's not the demographics, though, that are necessarily damning. It's the belief systems that have created a tremendous sea change in the people who are working in the various industries, because you didn't just bring in a bunch of people, you tossed a bunch of, a bunch of people out, and those people were those who disagreed ideologically with what you are doing. That is propagandizing so much of this. The payment, of course, people not getting to go to work because they did not work for the market. And that is where we'll leave it today. Folks, we here, though, we believe in the market. We believe in you. And if you enjoyed this, if you understand more what's going on, then click the like button, share, subscribe, click it, stick it to the algorithms. It's the notification bell. Remember that you are the gigawatts and every video is made for you to make you better, to make you wiser, to make you smarter, and to show you what's really going on. Do you think the companies out there are going to declare that woke is what made these things go broke and made these people go home and not have a job? No, they'll never say it. We have to parse this out. We have to show you that when we reported on Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League, and how terrible it was, this is the sacrifice that has been made as a result. Sales down, employees gone, studios destroyed. Warner Brothers Discovery not happy at all. David Zaslov, I don't think he's going to look forward to giving more money to the hooligans who made this sort of trash. All right, folks, we are out of here, wherever you are and whatever you're doing. Keep learning, keep growing, and find things that help you keep having fun. Ah, floral. It's time for you to walk the plank. What? Why? Because you, you haven't subscribed to WDW Pro yet. Nor bookmark that parkplace.com on your web browser to get great articles from great contributors. What?